Good afternoon. My name is Dwayne Brown with the Office of Communications and welcome to NASA headquarters. Today you will hear about the preparations, challenges, science, and much, much more of the upcoming August landing on the Martian surface of the most advanced rover designed by humankind. We also have the debut of one of the many education and public outreach tools for the public to experience the adventure of Mars exploration. To officially kick us off and set the stage for today's event, to provide opening remarks is five-time flown space shuttle astronaut, astrophysicist, and the Associate Administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate. Please welcome Dr. John Grunsfeld. Well, I'm just incredibly excited to be here. We are 20 days, 12 hours, 29 minutes, and 47 seconds from landing on Mars. MSL holds the potential to look for evidence of habitable environments if they existed on Mars in the distant past. The Curiosity rover has the potential to discover the building blocks of life on Mars, if life ever existed on Mars. This is just phenomenal that we have a rover that's this close to landing and over the next two years helping us to answer these questions. However, <clears throat> The Curiosity landing is the hardest NASA robotic mission ever attempted in the history of exploration of Mars or any of our robotic exploration. This is risky business. Given that we are in the heart of summer, there's a real opportunity to achieve tremendous broad public engagement on this adventure on Mars. We're going to engage summer camps, science centers, our NASA centers, in fact, all around the world, people will be following uh, the Mars Science Laboratory landing and the subsequent adventures of the Curiosity rover. 43 years ago today, the Apollo 11 mission launched to the moon. I hope the MSL Curiosity landing will be as memorable as and exciting for kids today as the Apollo 11 landing was when I was in summer camp 43 years ago. And I remember it well, and it put me on a path uh, that I've found very exciting, leading to me here at NASA headquarters in front of this distinguished panel, the best of the best. And I'm sure you're going to hear about uh, the difficulties, the great science we expect, uh, and the harrowing ride through the Martian atmosphere that is now 20 days, 12 hours, 27 minutes, <laughs> and 53 seconds from landing. Welcome, and uh, I'll hand it over to Doug McQuiston. Thank you. Thanks, John. Okay. Before we hand it over to Doug, uh, a, a few housekeeping notes. For the folks and the many folks out there watching us on television and elsewhere, you can follow the Mars mission, the Mars exploration program, and a host of other information on www.nasa.gov slash Mars and www.nasa.gov slash MSL. And yes, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, social media, and the like. Follow us at at Mars Curiosity. Join the conversation. There will be a lot of it starting today and beyond. The excitement is building not just here in the United States but all over the world. Now, let's get started. Let me introduce you to today's speakers. First up will be Doug McQuistian, Director, Mars Exploration Program, NASA Headquarters in Washington, D.C. Michael Meyer, Lead scientists for the Mars Exploration Program, NASA Headquarters. John Gratzinger, Mars Science Lab, Project Scientist, California Institute of Technology, Pasadena, California. Pete Tysinger, Mars Science Laboratory Project Manager from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. And Jeff Norris, Manager, Planning and Execution Systems, also at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So hang on to your hat, strap on, and I'll toss it over to Doug. All right. Thanks, Dwayne. Well, just in case you missed it, 
We're 20 days from uh, what could arguably be the most important event, most significant event in the history of planetary exploration. What's fun, what's going to be fun, is we also have something at the end of this uh, press conference that I think you'll like. It's a little unique twist we'll do here. I think you'll enjoy it. Mars Science Lab, most challenging mission we've ever sent to another planet and certainly the most challenging we've sent to Mars. It truly is a major step forward both in technology and in science, potential science return and science capability to unlock the mysteries of Mars in places that have never been ex uh, accessible to humankind in the past. Got to have the first uh, graphics up. Thank you. This program, the Mars Exploration Program, was designed to create steady progress in both technology and scientific capabilities at other planets. Spirit and opportunity to MSL. We've changed and significantly reduced the landing ellipses, so our landing accuracy is much higher. We've extended mission life. We've extended roving distances. We've made great strides in the potential science we can do with the instrument suite that's aboard. Our orbiters are no less important and interesting. We've gone from Odyssey to Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, imaging capabilities dramatically enhanced, as well as the capability to return larger and larger volumes of data from the planet, both surface missions and orbital missions. Uh, these are very important tools to expand science and greater capability for the United States as well as the world in science. But with that capability expansion comes a need to land in a new way. So this is no airbag bounce that we're going to get here. This is a Viking-like landing, but with a twist. The engines are on top of this system instead of underneath it so that it's easier to rove when we get there in a technique called the sky crane. Is it crazy? Well, not so much. Once you get comfortable, once you understand it, it's not a crazy concept. It works. Is it risky? Landing on Mars is always risky. There are hundreds of discrete events that occur from release of the cruise stage to parachute deployments to heat shield deployments. All of these are unique and anyone could cause problems. We go from 13,000 miles an hour to zero in seven minutes. That's, uh, that's quite a challenge in itself. And then there's the unknown, there's Mars. Mars throws things at you, dust storms, atmospheric density changes, wind. So it's a very unique and a very challenging environment. You're gonna hear a lot more about the details of entry, descent, and landing from Pete in just a few minutes. But what I wanna do is describe what it feels like. EDL, entry, descent, and landing, is like a game of dominoes. With the release of that, that cruise stage about 10 minutes before we hit the top of the atmosphere, that's the first domino that's been flicked. The long string of dominoes that follows, that are supposed to fall in sequential order, are all done autonomously, just like in entry, descent, and landing. If one of them is out of place, it's very likely that the last domino won't fall, which means Mars Science Lab, Curiosity Rover, may hit the ground harder than we want it to. Remember, every landing is unique. Every landing is like a first. I'm incredibly proud of the team that's done this. They, are, they have done a fantastic job of testing systems, designing systems, obviously, and building them, but analyzing them and testing them, understanding the edges of the envelope, pushing them to their limits. They've done everything possible to ensure the success of this mission. There's always a few last-minute game changers. As an example, Odyssey lost a reaction wheel a few weeks ago. That was totally unexpected. Reaction wheels are utilized to help manage spacecraft attitude and momentum in space. We haven't fully worked out the issues related to that loss yet, but we have plenty of backup systems. Mars Reconnaissance Orbital will be collecting communications data. ESA's Mars Express will help us with that. Of course, there's a deep space network. Odyssey right now looks like it may not be in the same spot that we'd expected it to be. So there may be some changes in real-time communication. We'll let you know as this develops. We still have more work to do. But keep in mind, there is no risk to MSL landing. It does not have an effect on that. It's important to keep in mind the communication. So in summary, NASA was created to take on big challenges, and that's what this one is. MSL is forging ahead in greater and greater ways for science and for technology. Robert Kennedy said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. MSL is poised to do great things. Come with us, follow us with the rest of the journey. Meet us on the surface of Mars on the 6th of August. I'll let you hear the details from my colleagues. Michael?
Well, thank you, Doug. And for those who are having problems with the math, August 6, 131 <laughs> in the morning on the East Coast, uh, the Mars Science Laboratory will deliver Curiosity to the surface of Mars. And it's to answer the big question, has Mars ever been able to support life? Starting with the landing of Mars Pathfinder in 1997, our understanding of Mars has basically boosted our concept uh, that Mars has had the energy, the ingredients, and the liquid water that could have supported life. Over the last decade and a half of exploration, we have found more water than expected. We have found plains of water or ice surrounding the poles on Mars. We have found the equivalent of buried glaciers at mid-latitudes. We have found modern-day reoccurring flow features that suggest brine. And we have found the minerals that have formed in water associated with specific periods of Mars history. We have revealed the, the planet with the resources to support life and which has undergone a huge transition from a warm, wet, relatively neutral planet then losing its, most of its atmosphere and magnetic field to a cold and dry, acidic planet that we see today. With the landing of Curiosity, the adventure begins as we explore the past and present environments at Gale Crater. And to tell us more about Gale Crater, turn it over to John. Thanks very much, Michael. Uh, it's my pleasure to tell you today a little bit about the, the landing site that we're going to explore. Uh, in the past, I've, I've discussed all the exciting science instruments that we have on, on Curiosity. Uh, but today, as we get ready for landing, I, I'd like to say a little bit to remind you about what we're going to be doing on our mission for habitable environments. Now, just so that everybody is aware of that, what we mean by a habitable environment is a place that has water, because all life as we know it depends on, on water. Uh, we need a source of energy because all microorganisms require uh, some source of energy in order to, to live. And in addition to that, we need to identify a, a source of carbon, uh, which may be the most difficult search that we have on this mission, all organisms as we know it are constructed of carbon. So that's what we mean by a habitable environment. So it's not just one thing we're after, it's several things, and, and we may find one here and one there. So this is going to be a mission that requires a lot of patience. In the, uh, as a scientist, this is not something for which there is a slam dunk discovery, but, but many bits of information come together to build this, and it's going to take us a while uh, to get there. However, we have a great place to do this. So if I can go to the first graphic, please. Uh, what we see here uh, is the location of Gale Crater on a very important transitional boundary on the surface of Mars where we go from the southern highlands, which are colored there in sort of the hot colors, going from reds down into yellows and then passing into blues. They give way to the part of Mars called the northern lowlands. And across that boundary, we think, billions of years ago, water flowed across that surface and was present. And there's Gale Crater, sort of like a little bowl, capturing uh, any water that may have been present there. Gale is one of the lowest places on Mars. And if you don't know anything else in advance, that's where you want to go to find evidence of water. Water flows downhill, and that's where we're going. OK, in the middle of, of that bowl, Gale Crater, uh, which to give you a sense of the size of the crater, it's about the width of the Los Angeles Basin. And in the middle of it, we have a mountain that the science team has called Mount Sharp. And that mountain in the middle, notice again the color and the color scale. That mountain has five kilometers of relief on it. That's taller than any mountain in the lower 48 states in the U.S. So that's our primary exploration target as we, as we head into the crater. Okay, so if I can have the next one, please. Here's a blow-up now of Gale Crater, and you can see Mount Sharp there in the middle of the crater. And there's our little landing ellipse. And, and I say little because Pete will show this uh, in a minute. But one of the great science uh, accomplishments already has been given to us by engineering, which is being able to get a landing ellipse so small that we can get into the very best places on the surface of Mars. Our final four landing sites were all top choices by the science community. None of them were excluded by engineering.